Um, it's 10 a.m. Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Redeemer, our Feast of the Reformation on Zoom. And the, for the prelude, we will hear our organist, Molly Raven, play a version of Ein Festeberg ist unser Gott by Helmut Volka. We acknowledge that the land on which we reside, worship and gather was first the home of the Dakota and Ojibwe Chippewa people. Minnesota means sky tinted water in the Dakota language. We honor the first nation people who continue to live and work here as part of this community. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one who God who creates, redeems and sustains us in all creation, amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. <clears throat> Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. 
led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Let us sing together, a mighty fortress is our God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. We sing the Kyrie and the Gloria together.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Send out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us hear God's word. First reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it into their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We will read the marvelous Reformation Psalm 46 responsively, the higher verses on the odd verses and the, the uh, lower voices on the even verses, and we will read together the final refrain in verse 11. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The, the Lord, Lord of hosts, hosts is with us. us. The, the God, God of Jacob, Jacob is our stronghold. stronghold. The second reading is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin, but now apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time 
that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded by what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this Reformation Sunday is from John chapter 8, verses 31 to 36. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue with my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The gospel of the Lord prays to you, O Christ. I see I have some little friends in the Bollinger household. <laughs> Hello. Katie and Martin are waving to you. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I greet you once again on behalf of your Christian sisters and brothers from across the ocean and around the world and my family and congregation in the Stadtkirche, the town and parish Lutheran Church of St. Mary in Wittenberg, Germany, the mother church of the Reformation, the altar of which you see behind me. For this is where the, first, the mass was first celebrated in the German language rather than Latin, and bread and wine were distributed to the congregation on Christmas day in 1521. It is also where Katie Luther and I were married in 1525. So 
It is with great joy that I am with you again today, thanks to the technological miracle of Zoom. In spite of the global coronavirus pandemic, which has shut down all public in-person celebrations of the mass. Also, thank you for the invitation once again from your pastor. For neither COVID-19 nor the devil himself can prevent the preaching of God's word, the good news of God's grace in Jesus Christ through justification by faith, which is a gift of God through the Holy Spirit. I also know how important it is to proclaim the truth of God, as we heard from the Lord Jesus himself in today's gospel from John. If you continue in my word, Jesus said, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. We all know from bitter experience how important, how crucial the truth is in matters of faith and life, in human relationships, and for a democracy in this time before an election. It is just as crucial in matters of life and death, health and safety during a pandemic, especially when fools and charlatans preach a false gospel of herd immunity without vaccinations or claim to be immune, which is foolishness. Now, most of you are familiar with me and my life's work because of the Reformation, my posting of 95 theses for debate with the church on this day in 1517, my refusal to recant my words because here I stand, I can do no other God help me, and my battles with the Pope and the Roman Catholic Church in those days, which have only recently been partly resolved. As you may know, my writing of a you also may know my writing of a small catechism if you studied confirmation and a mighty fortress, the hymn we sang today. But today I want to share one of my lesser known works because it was in response to a deadly sickness that infected people throughout Europe and came to my own town of Wittenberg in 1527, 10 years after the Reformation began. The bubonic plague had swept across Europe that was polarized by the Protestant Reformation when Catholics and Protestants blamed each other for cowardice and mistakes. I think you may relate to this epidemic as you deal with your own COVID-19 here in your city and state of Minnesota in the United States and around the world divided as you are. 1527 was a hard year for me personally as I struggled with depression and other chronic illnesses, which left me unable to preach for months. And at one point, I thought I was gonna die. In August of that year, the plague came to Wittenberg called the Black Death, the bubonic plague. It spread by infected fleas, but also was transmitted through the air highly contagious, it killed half of those who contracted it. It was so dangerous and greatly feared that many students and faculty of my own University of Wittenberg fled. I refused. What was a Christian to do? Stay or flee? I was asked this by the Reverend Dr. Johann Hess, pastor at Breslau, which I was finally able to answer in my book, whether one may flee from death and a deadly plague available in my collected works in, by Fortress Press. Now I have heard many Lutheran pastors today, including your own ELCA presiding Bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, have quoted from this book as they have encouraged, counseled and warned you to take this year's coronavirus seriously and protect yourselves, to wash your hands, to wear a mask, keep six feet at least of distance, and do not gather in large groups, even for worship, but holding on to the faith of God. This is the same advice I gave to my own people in Wittenberg in 1527. Now I understood that the human instinct to flee from a plague is natural and made sense to many. 
but I also taught that it was the responsibility for city leaders, physicians, and nurses to stay to care for their people, and for Christian pastors and laypersons to also remain if they were able for last rites and Christian care as a witness of love for your neighbor. When quarantine was the only defense, I taught that every parish should establish a home for the sick. Katie and I took so many suffering people into our home that our house was under quarantine even after the plague left our city. So what follows are nine key Christian values and teachings I shared in my book. One, we must accord our neighbors the same treatment in times of plague as in other troubles and perils also, and we owe it to our neighbors to do so. If our neighbor's house is on fire, love compels me to run to help them extinguish the flames. Loving your neighbor is the main principle in any response to the plague. So today we should abstain from meeting in person for public worship, wash our hands, and wear a mask because Jesus commands that you love your neighbor as yourself. Two, examples in Holy, Christ, in Holy Scripture abundantly prove that to flee from death is not wrong in itself. We can see from Abraham, Jacob, David, the prophet Uriah, and Moses that they fled from circumstances in order to save their lives, to bear witness another day. So we should all explore Scripture for wisdom in how to respond to a pandemic. Three, Christian ethics means that those who are engaged in a spiritual ministry, such as preachers and pastors, must likewise remain steadfast before the peril of death. We have a plain command from Christ. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, but the hireling sees the wolf coming and flees. For when people are dying, they, most, they must need a spiritual ministry which strengthens and comforts their consciences by word and sacrament and in faith overcomes death. However, when enough preachers are available in one locality and they agree to encourage the other clergy to leave in order not to expose themselves needlessly to danger, I do not consider such conduct sinful because spiritual services are provided and because they have been ready and willing to stay if it had been necessary. So today you are all encouraged to use discretion and wisdom in personally dealing with the present pandemic, not to take unwise risks, protect yourselves as well as others. We also honor and give thanks to the many frontline workers, health givers, healthcare givers and first responders who give communal response to those suffering from COVID-19. Four, use common sense. Should one flee from a deadly plague? It depends on your context. Common sense regards guarding safety and protecting yourself as well as others should guide you. Five, faith remains central. Those who stay behind to assist those in need during the ravages of the plague on the front line uphold a good cause, namely a strong faith in God and deserve commendation because they desire every Christian to hold on to a strong and firm Six, sins of omission have murderous consequences. You may find this harsh, but those who do not make sacrifices for their neighbors, but instead forsake them and leave them to their misfortune, become murderers in the sight of God. As John's epistle reads, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? In the small catechism, I taught how the commandment, you shall not kill, means extending help to my neighbor. So in the present pandemic, not wearing a mask or keeping distance or washing hands may be a sin of omission, as well as withholding funds for food, rent, or the daily needs of suffering people who have lost their jobs. Seven, listen to physicians. Now, some are much too rash and reckless tempting God and disregarding everything which might counteract death and the plague, but instead lightheartedly make sport of it and wish to prove how independent they are. They say it is only God's punishment. If God wants to protect them, God can do so without medicines or our carefulness. This is not trusting God, but rather tempting God. God has created medicines, 
and provided us with intelligence to guard and take good care of the body so that we can all live in good health. It is even more shameful for the reckless to pay no heed to their own bodies and fail to protect them against the plague the best they are able, and then to infect and poison others who might have remained alive if they had taken care of their bodies as they should have. They are thus responsible before God for their neighbor's death and are a murderer many times over. No, my friends, my dear friends, this is no good. Use medicine. Take potions which can help you. Fumigate house, yard, and street. Shun persons and places wherever your neighbor does not need your presence or has recovered and act like someone who wants to help put out the burning city. What else is an epidemic but a fire which instead of consuming wood and straw devours life and body? So I repeat for you today during COVID-19, don't gather in large groups, stay a safe distance, wash your hands, wear your facial covering and respect the wisdom and guidance of medical professionals like Dr. Michael Osterholm of Minnesota and Dr. Tony Fauci of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Why tempt fate in bars and rallies? Be wary of politicians who do not respect science. Eight, it is crucial for good government to respond to a plague. Now it would be well where there is an efficient government in cities and states to maintain municipal homes and hospitals staffed with people to take care of the sick. In the same way, your communal response to the pandemic today affirms the crucial role of government, public health agencies and organizations in caring for those in need and preventing needless deaths. Nine, love of neighbor combats diabolical forces. Because we know that the devil's game is to induce fear and dread, we should instead minimize it. Take courage just to spite and annoy him and send those terrors right back to the devil. We should arm ourselves with this answer to the devil. Get away, you devil, with your terrors. Just because you hate it, I'll spite you by going all the more quickly to help my sick neighbor. I'll pay no attention to you and your hate. So, my friends, have faith. COVID-19 will not last forever. After the plague of 1527 passed through Wittenberg, I recovered from my illnesses and I lived almost another 20 years. I learned from my experience. I hope I can share with you this wisdom and with Faith, faith and prayers to Almighty God help you survive as well. So just one last thing. Almost everyone knows my most famous hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, which you sang today. But I'll bet you didn't know this. I didn't write it in 1517 when the Reformation began. I wrote it following my sickness after the plague hit us in Wittenberg in 1527. So the verses I wrote refer not only to the destruction of warfare, persecution and strife, but also to the death and destruction by plague and sickness that we all went through. So it is not only an anthem to the Reformation, it is also a song of faith in the goodness and power of God who is always with us, no matter what suffering we must endure in life. Think of it as a song of faith for you today to sing as you face the challenges of political division and this pandemic in your time. So please allow me to share the one last verse from this song of faith. That word abides in earthly powers no thanks to them be given. The spirit and the gifts are ours through him who stands beside us. Let goods and kinfolk go, this mortal life unfold. The body they may kill, God's truth undying still. His kingdom is forever. In closing, 
We admonish and plead with you in Christ's name to help us with your prayers so that we may all do battle with word and precept against the real and spiritual pestilence of Satan in his wickedness with which he now poisons and defiles the world. I will also pray for you this election season as you fight for faith and your democracy that you and your neighbors will be saved through God's mercy and grace. So may God, Christ our Lord and Savior preserve us in all pure faith and fervent love, unspotted and pure until his day. Pray for me, a poor sinner. Amen. Please join us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life, the life everlasting. Amen. As we commemorate the Reformation this year, we do so in a time of pandemic. With the ecumenical and global family, we bring our prayers for healing. And we join with our siblings of other communions in joint service to the neighbor, in restraint and vigilance, and in shared witness. So let us now pray for the world, the church, and all those who are in need. God of mercy, throughout history, your goodness prevails. Open the hearts of all people to discover the deep bond of community. 
Show us your goodness and mercy that endure forever. Hear our prayer. God of peace, bend that which is inflexible, the identity barriers that divide, the attachments that thwart reconciliation, bring peace in the world, especially the places where there has been so much conflict for so many years now. Restore wholeness among us and show us your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our healer, come to our aid as COVID-19 continues to spread. Heal those who are sick, protect family and friends who are being infected from being infected. Support those in public health and medical services. Strengthen our resolve to eradicate all diseases, malaria, dengue, HIV and AIDS, and many others of the plagues we have known. We pray especially today for those who are known to us, Heather, Deanne, Amanda, Marie, Kurt, Diane, Mary, Crystal, Anne, Colleen, Irene, Mary Lou, Sam, Terry, Molly Cha and her mother, and those we hold before you in our hearts. Show us your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, hasten justice for those suffering under the power of evil and every form of oppression and greed. Give new life to all. Show us your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our rock and fortress, protect refugees, those without home or security, all the abandoned children. Help us always to defend human rights and human dignity. Show us your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, all your creation groans in expectation. Convert us from exploitation. Teach us to live in harmony with your creation. Show us your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, strengthen and protect those who are persecuted for faith in you and those of other faiths who also suffer persecution. Give us the courage to profess our faith. Your mercy endures forever. Hear our prayer. God of life, heal painful memories, transform complacency and indifference, inspire and sustain our ecumenical journey from conflict to communion, all of us are branches on the one vine, Jesus Christ. Show us your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our sustenance, bring us together at your Eucharistic table. Turn us to you and one another. Nurture within and among us a communion rooted in your love. Your mercy endures forever. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Also with you. 
Share the peace. God's peace. Peace, peace. 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 peace the Lord, everybody. Lord's peace to all. Peace. Peace with you, Katie and Martin. With you. We'll now hear for a musical offering, a piece uh, by J.S. Bach, played by Molly Rabin and Eliana Thorne on cello. <laughs> Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink. And send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise.
Holy God, our bread of life, our table and our food, you created a world in which all might be fed by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your strong spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours. Almighty God, with Father, with Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends of Christ, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your journey. The body of Christ, given for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ, shed for you, take and drink. Sing the Lamb of God. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I'm calling upon Carla. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, we give you thanks, gracious God, that you all have, that you have once again fed us with the found food beyond compare the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever, amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life, amen. Amen. Exit.
we sing our closing hymn. in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God.